So I've been using Cloud Code for most of my development work this year, along with Cursor. But lately, I'm questioning whether it might be time for me to switch to Codex CLI as my daily driver for AI coding tasks. You know, as we know, Cloud Code has been extremely popular with, with a lot of developers this year. But I couldn't help but notice that OpenAI has been making a pretty aggressive move to win a lot of those developers back with their ongoing improvements to Codex and their Codex CLI product. And my early tinkerings with GPT-5 for coding projects have been mostly positive. Meanwhile, if you're a daily Claude Code user, then you're probably just as frustrated as I've been with Claude Code's good days and bad days, and their tightening up of token limits. You know, I'm connected to professional builders through builder methods, and I can't help but notice that there's this momentum shift currently happening where Claude Code users are curious, if not actively starting to migrate over to using Codex CLI. Look, I know the danger of shiny object syndrome, and it's a lesson that I constantly have to relearn. Switching tools every time something new drops, it's a guaranteed way to kill your productivity. But there's a difference between chasing trends and recognizing when there's real friction that's holding you back, and it might be worth a look at something new. Today, I'll show you exactly how I'm comparing these tools and what features actually matter to me when it comes to deciding on my daily driver for AI coding. And by the end of this video, we'll see where I'm landing on this decision and what I see as the trade-offs. If we haven't met yet, I'm Brian Castle. I help professionals stay ahead of the curve when it comes to building with AI. I do that here on the channel and in my free builder briefing. That's a five minute read that I send out every Friday to help you stay sharp. You can get your builder briefing by going to buildermethods.com. And subscribers always find out about my next live workshop where we talk about what's actually working in building with AI. Now, let me tell you where I'm coming from because I think that informs how I evaluate the tools that I use every day. And I hope that my perspective here helps you figure out what your priorities are. You know, I build and ship products. That's my North Star. So every tool decision, every workflow optimization, it all comes down to the question of, does this help me go from idea to shipped while maintaining my craft? That's what drives my day-to-day -day product work and my work on Agent OS. That's the system I created for powering your spec-driven development workflow. It's designed to be tool agnostic because I want Agent OS to help us work with our agents in a smarter way regardless of which interface we're using. And so I don't choose my tools based on hype or brand loyalty. I choose based on what actually helps my craft and helps me ship better products faster. And sometimes that means flipping between multiple tools depending on the task. You know, recently I'm seeing significant changes happening both from Cloud Code and from OpenAI's Codex. That's what's making me reconsider my tool choices here. This isn't about one tool getting worse. It's about this whole landscape evolving and I think Right now, we're seeing some pretty healthy competition between these products. You know, I've been using Claude Code every day, and I've been noticing three points of friction. The first is that it works pretty slowly, even on simple tasks. So I'll give it a basic task, and then I'll watch it think for minutes, and that can kill my momentum completely. But that doesn't bother me so much on the larger tasks, since that's where I like to let Claude Code cook and let it work autonomously while I go work on something else. Second, there's this weird good days and bad days thing happening where sometimes Claude Code will nail some complex logic perfectly, and other days it just struggles with basic patterns that it handled just fine last week. And third, the token limits on Anthropic's max plans, they just keep getting tighter. I'll build out one feature using a spec with Agent OS, and boom, I've exhausted my entire allowance. And then I'm waiting for my next five hour window, and that's absolutely brutal when I'm in the flow. Meanwhile, on the Codex CLI side, OpenAI is making some moves. They dropped GPT-5 with the clear messaging that they want developers back. They even created GPT-5 Codex, which is a model specifically tuned for their CLI tool. And my early tests with GPT-5 in Cursor have been positive. The code quality is consistent, it feels snappy. And you know, when you see this friction increasing on one side and then innovation accelerating on the other, that's when I start to look around and see if a switch is worth it even if the switching cost might be uncomfortable. So let's go ahead and take a look at Codex CLI and I'll give you my first impressions. So I'm here in Cursor, that's still my IDE of choice. Uh, I like to use the terminal inside Cursor, that's where I typically run Claude Code because I like to switch between running Claude Code and sometimes diving into the code itself and sometimes using Cursor's AI chat. But today we're gonna run Codex. So I've already installed it on my system, so I'm just gonna start it up by running Codex, easy enough. 
Now, keep in mind that these tools are evolving rapidly. So, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of improvements coming in the next weeks and months. Uh, but as of this recording, here's what I'm seeing uh, on the surface right off the bat. It looks somewhat similar to Cloud Code. Uh, it's a terminal based interface. And just like Cloud Code, you can hit the slash key to see what the available commands are. Um, so I always like to check out the model to see uh, what we're on. So it looks like um, they have this GPT-5 codex model. There's a low, medium, and high. So we're on uh, GPT-5 codex medium. That's the current. That's what I've been using, and I've I've been pretty happy with the results. I think the low, medium, and high is sort of like a, a balance between you know speed and uh, thinking level and, and that sort of thing. Of course, you could switch to OpenAI's other models here, but you know the the Codex models really are the ones that are supposedly tuned for uh, Codex CLI. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these commands right now. I just want to highlight the ones that are interesting to me, especially as someone who's coming from Cloud Code, and I'm trying to wrap my head around what's similar, what's different here in Codex CLI. So I see init, that's another uh, familiar command that we've had in Cloud Code, which in Codex CLI will do something similar. It'll basically analyze my code base and then create uh, an agents.md file, similar to how Cloud Code will fill out the claw.md file with you know, uh, some information about the code base based on its own basic scan. And by the way, Agents MD is this uh, open source project. I think that it's led by OpenAI, but there are, um, you know, a bunch of other companies uh, that have sort of signed on to it. And what I really like about this project and this movement in general is this standardization across these tools. I, I like to see convergence of multiple tools starting to adopt very similar structures and similar features because it it helps us as builders be able to easily switch between them. And so um, OpenAI and Codex CLI are using this agents MD file as the main uh, memory file, if you will. Another familiar command is this compact command. And I did another video on the channel all about the compact command in Cloud Code and, and using it to help manage Cloud Code's short-term memory. It's a very similar function here in Codex. What it does is it lets you uh, compact uh, the, a really long conversation and it'll automatically summarize what's been said so that you can uh, kind of refresh your context window. Of course, you could just clear your conversation using the new command. I think that's similar to Cloud Code's clear command. I haven't really used this review feature just yet. Uh, I know it's uh, relatively new, but I guess it'll uh, kind of review my current changes and find some issues. You can configure MCP tools with uh, Codex CLI, just like you can with Cloud Code. So one of my favorites lately is the Playwright MCP, which lets the agent actually open up a browser and click things and check things in responsive sizes and whatnot. So that's nice to have. It has this mention command, but you might as well just use the at sign to mention any file in your code base, um, which I think is just an essential table stakes feature for this type of tool to be able to quickly call out uh, any file and call the agent's attention to it. And you know, Agent OS can work really well with Codex CLI because you can easily just mention the commands that come with Agent OS. So if I want to, you know, create a, a spec, I can just, you know, start typing create spec and it's going to find that command from Agent OS. Uh, I can then hit tab to bring that into the context of this prompt and, you know, do something like um, proceed with this. Sometimes you don't even have to add the text, um, but it just sort of gives it instructions like, here's your instructions, go ahead and uh, and create that spec. I'm not gonna do that right now. Of course, you can interrupt by hitting the escape key. That's a similar move from Cloud Code. You know, another thing that's similar between the Codex CLI and Cloud Code is the clunkiness of the terminal-based interface. You know, this really uh, get, takes some getting used to. So if you're, you know, if you wanna write like multiple lines, if, normally I would hit return, but of course that just sends the message, which I don't want to do. I'm going to escape that. So instead, what you would do is, you know, you'd be typing. And as you can see here, you can use the control J to do a, a, a next line. I, I find that pretty clunky. You can also just do uh, option return. So I'm going to do that. And that that's my muscle memory now. So whenever I'm in cloud code, I just hit like option return to do multiple lines, which is kind of confusing when I flip over to a regular UI that comes with cursor because in cursor, I'm, I'm doing shift return. So that can be really frustrating when you're trying to uh, train your muscle memory and you're flipping between uh, CLI tools and a basic uh, interface like cursor. But that's where we're at right now. You know, another thing that just isn't great about uh, these terminal-based tools is that when you have a lot of text 
from somewhere else, which I often do, and then you paste it in. I'm going to do Command V. You don't actually see the text right away when you paste it in. You just see uh, these these sort of brackets, um, and that's exactly the same in Claude Code. I mean, I can I can continue to to type around that, but I won't actually see my pasted text until I hit Return and and I see the uh, and I see what was there. You know, I think that just seems to be one of these limitations in these uh, terminal-based interfaces. And you, know, you start to get used to it, but it can be frustrating. You know, another thing that is really important to me is the ability to drop images into the interface, because that's something that I do all the time. I'll take a screenshot of an interface uh, or, a, or a design or a mock-up or a wireframe, and I'll put it in there and I'll use that to direct the agent on a fix that it needs to make or it needs to match a certain mock-up. Now, this is a little bit different right now between Codex and Claude Code. So at least in Codex, we have the ability to drop an image into the interface like that, and you can reference it like that. But of course, then I got to like use the mouse and I got to you know show my desktop or grab the image from somewhere, which is kind of annoying. What I'd much rather do, and something that I do all the time when I'm using Claude Code, is I use you know a tool like, like CleanShot to take a screenshot of something. You know I copy that to my clipboard, and then I paste. And unfortunately, in Codex, that doesn't seem to work. I just hit Command V, and nothing seemed to happen. So I can't exactly uh, paste an image that is on my clipboard right now. You, you, it looks like you have to actually drag it in. I would expect that that's going to be one of those things that Codex is going to add or improve at some point. But um, I could see that being a real bump in the road in my daily workflow because it's something that I do so frequently throughout the day. Now, as of today, in my view, there are two glaring gaps when I compare Codex CLI to what's available in Claude Code. And the first is subagents. Claude Code has had them for months, and I've done a few videos here on the channel all about them. Subagents, in my view, are game changing for several reasons, but mainly the fact that each subagent gets its own clean context window or its own frame of mind, if you will. So there's no confusion from all the past noise that happened earlier in the conversation. It's just focused execution on the task at hand. This is huge for spec-driven development. It's why in Agent OS 2.0, I added multi-agent mode, because when you can orchestrate multiple specialized agents, your features get built much more predictably. Now, I did come across this pull request on the Codex GitHub repo, which looks like sub-agent support might be coming in the near future, and I really hope that it does. Now, the second is that ability to set up custom commands. And Claude Code has called these custom slash commands. And that's where I can define a set of custom commands to be available to me when I type the slash key. Now, the good news is that I see this PR on the Codex repo, uh, and they call it custom prompts. And this is actually already merged and available to use in Codex. They just haven't added it to the actual public docs yet. And this basically adds that ability to create custom prompts that you can call uh, with the slash key. And I tested it out, but I noticed that there's one difference in how it works in Codex compared to how it works in Claude Code. So you may have noticed that when I hit the slash key and I go all the way down, there's this uh, command called test command. And that's a custom prompt that I set up for my Codex CLI. However, I'm not able to define my custom prompts for Codex CLI here in my project. They have to go into the Codex folder that lives in your system's home directory. So this is my home directory. Uh, this is my Codex folder. And then inside this prompts folder is where you can put your test commands. And then they will show up whenever you're using the slash key. And that can be useful for like really commonly used, you know, prompts that you use across all your projects. But I do like how in Claude Code, I can define custom slash commands within the project itself, because I do find that there are a bunch of commands uh, that are unique to each individual project and code base and don't need to be reused across uh, all my different projects. And of course, in Agent OS, we are compiling custom commands into your project's set of commands based on what the actual project needs. So I do hope that uh, Codex CLI will sort of expand the ability to use these custom prompts and define them at the project level and not just at the system level. So my takeaway, at least for now, is that Codex is showing some promise, but it feels like it's a few steps behind Claude Code as a product. Now, the question is, will I be jumping ship from Claude Code as my daily driver to using Codex CLI every day? Well, I think I'll be sticking with my hybrid approach, which up until now has involved 
two tools, Claude Code and Cursor. But I think that hybrid is gonna become a three-way split because I think this actually fits my real day-to-day -day needs a little bit better. So here's how it plays out. When I have a big complex feature and I want the agent to build it autonomously, then I'm reaching for Claude Code with Opus. I'm almost always using Agent OS to power a spec-driven development approach there. And when it's a quick fix or an iterative improvement, I'm still turning to Cursor because I think that that UI is best for those quick iterative changes. But I do think that Codex CLI can fill a middle ground. These medium-sized features where I want both power and speed. And sometimes I'll use a spec with Codex since I can use Agent OS in single agent mode. And sometimes I'll just prompt Codex to make the change and be done with it. And so that's where I'm landing on this question of Claude Code versus Codex CLI as my daily driver. And the way that I see it, you know, this landscape of AI coding tools is still wide open. So it's about orchestrating the set of tools that maximize your productivity and help you ship better products. And you know, if you're taking a spec-driven development approach, which I am most of the time, that is actually perfect for when you're switching between tools and taking a hybrid approach like I am. So if you're just catching up to what spec-driven development is and how it applies in a real-world setting, I want you to check out my video, Spec-Driven Development in the Real World. And that's where I'll show you a system that works regardless of which AI tools you're using. So right after you hit subscribe here, I'll see you in that next video. Let's keep building.